for us, it's always a pleasure to interact with the fresh entrants to the Indian Police Service, not only to the Indian Police Service, to all the services. And this is a privilege we have in the Bhagavatam Kada, because our Kada was the Masuri Academy. And in that capacity, we get to, every year, we get to, in some way or in some form or the other, we get to interact with the youngsters who are entering the All India Services, the Central Services, and we go on to you know, take the command of a huge bureaucratic structure in different ministries, in different services, in different state governments uh, that actually keeps uh, the country together and runs it on a daily basis. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I think it's a huge honor, an exciting uh, opportunity to be a part of this huge collective enterprise that is the idea of India and the government of India. So, I mean, when we interact, when I interact with you, I like to think you know what, I, mean, I don't know whether there is, of my 28 years of experience, what can I tell you that is likely to remain relevant for your next 30, 35 years of service? If the honest answer would be probably very little. But certain things, I think, uh, will remain important and essential in your career as well, just as they have remained in ours, the importance of uh, an open mind, I think. Those of you who will serve with an open mind, I think, will grow in service. Those of you who, who feel that just learning UPSC and completing the uh, training, uh, is, that is the end of your personal and intellectual growth, I think perhaps you may not have as satisfying an experience. It's just my personal opinion. Secondly, the importance of building genuine uh, camaraderie and friendships across the services. Not just within your own service, of course, because we go through this very, very grueling regimen of 10 months at the NPA, definitely the bonds we form with our fellow police service officers are stronger and more uh, intimate, but also during the four months you spent at the foundation course, I do hope that you formed some lasting bonds and friendship and sense of camaraderie with your colleagues in the other services. Because that's going to, uh, it's not just your police colleagues who are going to you know, provide you with uh, assistance, support, guidance, you know, help in time of crisis. It is your friends across the services who will uh, be of a great help to you as you, uh, uh, you know, deal with the, and tackle the challenges that you face in your own career. <coughs> then, uh, the, other, I mean, the other qualities from our time which I think will remain relevant in yours, I think the importance of being never failing to improve your professional skills. There's always something more to learn, and the <coughs> things you learn at the academy, the things you learn in your uh, respective street uh, training academies when you go there for your further training, all those things are going to be of extreme importance. And let me tell you, the work, I mean, in our time also, it was changing. The <coughs> organizations you will serve in, they are no longer as uh, differential to hierarchy or to your rank as they used to be. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, I think as a society, generally we have become more open and more democratic. So I think, you know, that old feudal mentality where an IAS or an IPS officer was literally looked upon like a, you know, godlike figure in the district. I think that sense of Respect and reverence amongst the public is gone. It's, a, it's, a, it, 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 it's gone in the past. But secondly, and uh, more importantly, you realize that earlier, the kind of difference that existed between the officers and the Jawans and the sub-inspectors in terms of their education, in terms of their sense of awareness, in terms of their sense of knowledge of the world, that difference is gone. You will find plenty of Jawans who are coming who have a graduate degree. You will have some inspectors with a postgraduate degree, with a law degree, with a non degree. 
So as far as basic education qualification is concerned, there is now increasingly the gap between the officers and the rest of the uh, organization has decreased to a considerable extent. And what that means is that purely by virtue of being more educated, by being you know, more aware of the outside world, you can no longer expect their automatic obedience and their automatic loyalty and their automatic respect. You have to earn it. And how do you earn it? By proving every day that you know the job better than them, you have thought about it harder than them, and you are going to put in more more effort than them in doing the job. So that's probably the only thing that is going to, of course, in the police, we are a uniformed you know, organization, there is a hierarchy, there is, you know, this, so, so some amount of, you will get the salute. Salute you will get, but pretty much that's all you will get. You won't get anything else. So if you want more from your subordinates and your colleagues, you have to, you know, earn it on a daily basis. So these are the two, three things that I think will remain relevant for the foreseeable future in the same services. These will not go away. What will change? Now, what will change, I think, as professional police officers, what's going to change first and foremost? I mean, you are going to be the, probably the first batch that will go into the field. <coughs> that will go into the field and be charged with the implementation of the three new criminal laws. So you ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or not, you are going to be at the cusp or at the lead cutting edge of the most important change in the criminal justice system since the nation of independence. And that itself, I think, is a challenge. Uh, <coughs> so, and at the same time, you have to maintain the systems that operate the old laws also side by side. So this is going to demand a great amount of you know, uh, managerial quality, scholarship, effort, and leadership for all of you. So, mark my words, I mean, I think uh, the bulk of your next 10 15 years are going to be consumed in managing this transition. <coughs> the second transition, I would say, is this coming of the artificial intelligence and uh, revolution, which again, I mean, I can't even imagine how it will transform. The world of the largest society, but what kind of new crimes will be committed to the new AI? How AI can be used in the tool of detection, evidence gathering, prosecution? So, both these areas, I think, are completely uncharted territory. I mean, I would be lying if I told you, but, or I would be just in the real foolish bravado if I told you that I had any clue, even after 28 years of service, about what these challenges are going to be. So those of you who are tech savvy, I suggest, you know, this this is going to, and it's going to hit us hard in the next five years. Today it's a, it's a very, very new technology, just a, maybe a year and a half old, but the speed at which it is maturing, and every day you are reading about newer, you know, uh, capabilities being added to the AI. Yeah, this is something really, really, uh, uh, difficult and and along with AI, cyber crime itself. I mean, Uttarakhand alone, you know, we see, we find earlier the distribution of crime. If you saw the geographical and spatial distribution of crime, if you map crime, you will find crime was confined to you know large population centers, certain parts of the country. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, cyber crime goes wherever the smartphone and the internet is. So, which is pretty much everywhere. So, this is going to be your second big challenge. Your third challenge, I would say, although it is not directly connected with the police, is this threat of environmental change and climate change. Now, <coughs> large scale, what, I mean, this is just an educated guess, large scale climate change is going to impact you know, large population centers across the world, especially coastal areas, where we, you know, foresee uh, increase in intensity of hurricanes and uh, storms, uh, rising sea levels. 
in uh, areas like Uttarakhand, which are dependent on uh, you know snow in the mountains for uh, you know uh, water in the rivers and various other activities. Here also extended periods of drought are what they are going to do to the local population. So the world of the future will have fewer places where large populations can live under a stable climate. There will be shortages of water. Water is going to be a scarce resource. So environment related conflicts, social conflicts, environment related crimes, this is again going to be a huge challenge for all of you uh, from the 76 Sahara over the next 30 35 years. So um, I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to alarm you by painting such a uh, unique picture, but I think you know, it is uh, my duty as uh, uh, your senior colleague in the service to give you a fair picture of uh, you know, what to expect. But I have no doubt, looking at all the bright young faces uh, before me and having read a bit about your education background, your work profile and all, I'm sure that this batch of the Indian Police Service is going to rise to the occasion just like all the batches before it and you will do a grand job of protecting and safeguarding this nation and its citizens. Thank you very much. Jai.